I'm going to show you how to step into your promised land in a short video. I'm not going to spoon feed you a promised land prophecy day after day, but I'm actually going to give you wisdom on how you can take your promised land territory for yourself. Now, will you get to your promised land to the end of this video? Probably not. Why? Because it's something called process. But either way, I can still give you the wisdom to help you get there. As simple as I can make this for you. Egypt is slavery. Wilderness is self. Promised land is service. So how can you get from Egypt to wilderness and then wilderness to promised land? First off, let's start off with going from Egypt to wilderness. If you are in Egypt, meaning you are in slavery to sin or a lie, or you are in bondage to anything, you must know the truth, and the truth of the Word of God will set you free. So, in Egypt, you must know that you have power and authority. God has granted you power and authority over every work of the enemy, over every temptation and power of the darkness God has given you and granted you as a child of God authority and dominion here on this earth. This is what God does to Adam and Eve in the garden is he blesses them and gives them authority. And then through Christ, we are also given authority to cast out devils, to lay our hands on the sick and they will recover. These are promises for those who believe in the name of Jesus. Jesus grants us authority over the demonic realm and over every unclean spirit. So if you're fighting that war against sin, know that God has granted you power and authority. And the second thing you must know is there is a freedom in identity. When going from Egypt into your promised land, you must know that you are no longer a sinner. Stop identifying yourself as a sinner when this is not biblical. God has given you a new identity as a child of God, as an ambassador of the Most High, as a king and a priest is what it says in the book of Revelation. God has given you a new identity that if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. So the reason why you may still be stuck in your sin is because you identify with your sin, saying that you are a sinner, but this is not who God says you are in Christ. Christ has made his home in you and has chosen you as a temple to dwell in and has set you apart for his glory. So going from Egypt... To the wilderness, there must be an exodus. There must be an exiting of what? Environments, relationships, people, or anything keeping you in bondage. Maybe you can't step out of Egypt because you are connected to the wrong people. The people who love your bondage or the environments, the bars, that also love your bondage. Disconnect. Let there be an exodus or an exit from these environments, these relationships, these people that are not bringing you closer to God. So now that you've exited Egypt, you know your power and authority. You know that there must be an exodus and you know that you are no longer a sinner, but you have been given a new identity in Christ. How can you go from the wilderness to the promised land? Well, in the wilderness, you must have faith that God is the provider. His name is Jehovah Jireh. This was a big problem for the children of Israel in the wilderness is that they would complain 
Why? Because they thought that God would not provide for them in this time. You must know that no matter what your bank account looks like, no matter what the pantry looks like, that God is the provider. He is the provider in each and every season. The second thing is there must be a submission to godly leadership. The children of Israel in the wilderness, they were uh, disobedient and they would not submit to Moses. I recommend being a part of a church. The word says, do not forsake the gathering of the assembly of the saints. Gather with the church and submit to godly leadership. Those who disobeyed Moses' commands did not enter into the promised land. The third key is that you must go from a grasshopper to a conqueror. In Numbers 13, God sends out 12 spies to go view out the promised land that God had already granted them. But only two spies out of the 12 were able to step into that promised land. And the 10 spies who weren't able to step into the promised land was because of how they viewed themselves. They viewed themselves as gross grasshoppers in the face of giants. So God wants you to conquer these giants and he wants to give you the faith to conquer these giants that are before you day after day. Whatever is holding you back in fear, you must not see yourself as a grasshopper, but you must see yourself how God sees you. Romans 8.37 says that in Christ, you are more than a conqueror. A promised land territory or a promised land season is one where you conquer. This is what Joshua did when he stepped in the promised land is that he conquered and won war after war after war. And this is what God is calling forth is promised land conquers, knowing that in Christ you are more than a conqueror. What does this mean to be more than a conqueror? This means that you don't just conquer that city, but you go into that city you, 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 you sack that city, you burn it with fire, and you take extra goods and gold with you. You are a conqueror. The, the fourth key in the wilderness is that you must know that it's no longer your life. This is the finances. This is relationships. This is goals. This is everything. Wilderness is to deliver you from you. It's to get your eyes off of yourself and your eyes onto God. It is no longer your life, whether it comes to finances, relationships, or anything. Galatians 2.20 says, it is no longer I who live, but this life that I live in this flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So I'm living and walking by faith not by sight, but by faith in Christ who loved me and gave himself for me. So give your life to God. Five is you must go from luxury to living sacrifice. A big reason why the children of Israel in the wilderness could not get to the promised land is because they loved the luxury that was back in Egypt even though they were slaves, they had some luxuries back there and they wanted to go back to Egypt. But you must be able to surrender these luxuries, become a conqueror, and become a living sacrifice. God is not looking for social media stars. He's looking for living sacrifices. Paul says in Romans 12.1, I urge or I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable, pleasing to God. This is your reasonable service. It is the very least that you can do for all that Jesus did for you on the cross with his precious blood. Hallelujah. 
The sixth key to go from wilderness to promise is you must be thankful no matter what. Many of the children of Israel died in the wilderness because of ungratefulness. They were so unthankful, even though God delivered them out of Egypt, even though God gave them a promise and said they would inherit it, even though God fed them manna from heaven, even though God poured forth water from the rock in that wilderness, God said he didn't allow their shoes to be worn out in those 40 years, but the children of Israel could not see this and they become ungrateful and the ungrateful ones did not make it into that promised land. Amen. So now that you are entering into your promised land territory, here are some keys to thrive in this promised land that is now full of service. You've come out of Egypt, meaning you've been delivered of your bondages and your past self and your past identity. You've come out of the wilderness, meaning, meaning it's no longer your life. You've laid it down to the Father. You're done serving you, and now you want to serve God, which is what the promised land is about. It's about serving God. So the first key is to be strong and courageous. This is what God commands Joshua at the very beginning of the book of Joshua. As he steps into that promised land, he says, Be strong and very courageous. Only observe carefully all of God's commandments and obey them. This is the same instruction that God gives in Deuteronomy 28. He says, if you want all these blessings to come upon you and overtake you, you must listen to God's commandments and hear His voice diligently. Heed, take watch, continue to seek and inquire of God and seek His presence above all as God continues to bless you and let those things overflow in your life. Be strong and courageous. Number two is know that you are called to be a warrior and an intercessor. <laughs> in Egypt, you were praying to be delivered. In the wilderness, you were praying to be delivered from you and you were praying for yourself and your blessings. But in the promised land, you're not just praying for you, you're praying for your family. You're praying for those who you're stewarding. You're praying for your unsaved loved ones. You are called to be an intercessor. Pray for those people whose lives you're seeking to transform and change. A promised land is a land of interceding and going to war for those who you love, for your employees, for the people around you. Pray and intercede and go to war for them in the spirit, believing that God is doing mighty things, not just in your life, but in their life as well. The third key is you go now to a servant and a slave. If you read the epistles, you'll see that Paul introduces himself in these letters as a bondservant. The word in the Greek is doulos. Paul identifies as a slave, as a bondservant of the Lord, meaning he's yoked to the Lord, and now he's living in submission to God to do what God calls and commands him to do. Again, knowing that it's no longer his life, but he's called to live in service to God. Which brings us to our last and fourth key, is that you are called to live a life of sacrifice and surrender. There will be sacrifices you have to lay down in the promised land. You will have to cut off things that do not serve God because God is calling you into a deeper level of surrender. In order for all these blessings to come upon you and overtake you, there must be a deeper level of surrender and a deeper commitment to God. This could look like cutting off social media. This could look like no Netflix at night. God is calling you to a deeper level 
of his glory because he wants to give you blessings to store, but he wants to know that he can trust you with those blessings. Amen. Let me know if you have any questions in the, in the comments. I pray that this word really give you a, a lot of wisdom on how to go from slavery to self to actually serving God and in, in, in reigning and in taking territory in that promised land that God has for you. It's no longer about you. It's about God. And there's so much freedom serving God. Amen. God bless you. Share this message with someone who needs it. Support by hitting the like button. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.